I spent the day with Warren Heward, a multi-platinum producer known for his work with The Fray, Aerosmith, James Blunt, and many others. I asked him my top five questions on mixing and check it out. In this same video, I'll let you hear how my mixes improve with his advice. Welcome to Spitfire Studios. Actually, the last time that Warren is gonna be interviewed at Spitfire Studios. Thank you for joining me on my channel. Sanjay, thank you ever so much. Always a pleasure having you here. I got a few questions for you. Please, and he hasn't told me what they're gonna be, yes, so this should yes. be interesting. <laughs> how do you get harder hitting drums in a mix? I think it's a balance of doing multiple things. So what I like to do is get really, really aggressive attack. So like that snappiness. Yeah. And the way to do that is to have is to slow down the, your attack time mm -hmm. so that you get enough of a transient coming through so you get that pa, 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 uh, very SSL sound. So don't use a really fast attack because yeah. then you won't hear much of a transient. Just slow your attack down till you start to get that pa, pa, and aggressively compress. Right. So it lets a bit of attack come through and then squashes quite aggressively. That's number one, but that okay. doesn't work on its own. That's just one of the elements. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll have like snare, for instance, I might have it bust to one or two or f possibly even sometimes three different buses. So I can have one that's going snap, 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 snap. And then I can have one that's going boosh, boosh, like tons and tons of body. Ah. And then, you know, maybe for a third one, sometimes a tiny bit of saturation can be kind of tasty. Now all of these things are just tricks that you can use in different amounts. Right. Um, another way I do it sometimes is to have, you know, the kicks and the snares because this what works for a kick also works for a snare. You know, the attack. Right. But you don't want it to be the only part of your drum sound because if it's just attack, you're going to have you're going to have tick tack tick 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 tack. You want to have you want to have that aggression of the right. attack, but you want to have the body as well. The point is, there's no real one way to do it because if you use one way, you'll end up with the same drum sound all the time. It's really a case of learning lots of different techniques yeah. and knowing when to employ them. Is there a technique for mixing bass that you see ignored the most? Yeah, overdrive, saturation, distortion. Mm. I think one of the things is we, we all love like a good kind of really overdriven bass sound, you know, and you can sort of just have like the bass and drums be carried by this massive fat yeah. distorted bass. Well, there's a place in between. Uh -huh. If you use light saturation, especially in the high mids on a bass guitar, in a slightly fuller mix, you don't hear the saturation, but you hear the cut of the bass. One of the problems for all of us, myself included, we listen to things in solo too much. True, very true. So if you listen to your bass sound in solo and it's got a little bit of hair on it, a little bit of grit, you might, oh, I want to get rid of that. Right. But you put it into the track, it completely disappears. It's another way of looking at it is like the ringing snare. Mm -hmm. The snare's going doing, doing, and the track is just crack, crack. Yeah. All that ring gets soaked up. But the ring is good because it helps the snare cut through. Same philosophy with the bass, a little bit of distortion, three to five K area, not really actually much above three K. It's probably like one, five, two, three, three, five, kind of just the mids around there, a bit of distortion in that area, just blend it in lightly on your bass. You won't hear it unless mm -hmm. it's soloed, but what you will hear is the bass just sticking its nose up just a little bit. Great for fingers, great for pick noise, just great generally to give it a little bit of articulation. Do you have a favorite plugin that you use for adding the distortion if you need to afterwards? Decapitator's amazing. That's the one that came to mind, yeah. I bet you whatever DAW you use, 
I bet you there is a stock saturational distortion in there which will work wonders. I have a lot of people who produce from scratch. They're creating beats from scratch. And then they come to the moment where they're like, this, is, this whole thing is a little dull, it's lacking energy. Hmm. What do you do if the track is just lacking that excitement and energy? I don't have a problem, you know, just using and abusing EQ, right. using and abusing compression, especially nowadays, because every major um, compressor that you can buy mm -hmm. has a mix knob. So get in there and compress it so it's like whoosh, exciting and angry. Right. And then just dial the mix bot not back. I love that. I'm going to try yeah. that. So you got Getting a, vocal. a little bit more aggressive with it. Because, yeah, yeah. I've, I've also watched the videos where they're like, hey, hey, you know, don't, yeah, don't, don't go crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know. Yeah. And then, they, and then they're like, you know, uh, and, and I've had people that have gone to school and they've said they're lecturers have said to them, you know, you're not supposed to boost, you only cut. And then you sit with Bob Clear Mountain, too. Reed yeah. Shippen, you know, Michael Brower, Chris Stored Out, you know, just name all the biggest mixers in the world. Yeah. And they're all going crank, crank, yeah. crank, crank. Wow. You know, Rule breakers out there, and it's okay. Make it sound exciting. See? Abuse the EQ. I love abuse that. Abuse the compression. And then what you can always do is use a parallel control on your plugin and just dial it back. Right. Most of all, don't obsess about it in solo. I, I don't mind listening in solo, especially when you're teaching. You can go into solo because it's hard to express sometimes subtle moves yeah. unless you can hear it in solo. But it really only matters what it sounds like inside of the track. And often right. those aggressive moves aren't as aggressive once they're in the track. They're I like just, that. Yeah, I've, I've even been guilty of that, soloing something, trying to perfect the sound, and it doesn't matter because once it's in the mix, yeah, yeah, it's going to be the very different. Great advice there. Yep. Might use that one for the thumbnail. We hear about AI a lot. Everybody's saying AI in this plugin, AI in that plugin. Have you actually used a plugin that says it's got AI that you've actually sure. liked for mixes? Yeah, I mean, AI is a, a fantastic tool. To be honest, it's been around for quite a while in quite a few different plugins. Yeah. I, I feel like for correctional stuff, it's going to be amazing. The better it gets, yes. the better it gets. For um, sure. When you've got a situation where you've got multiple frequencies that are may maybe spiking here and there, the fact that it can sit there and analyze it and keep it more even is going to be right. great for certain things. Yeah. Probably for vocals and stuff. Although, one of the finds we find a little bit exhausting, like boring actually is a better way of putting mm. it, is that vocals are very, very bland now. I think okay. OX Sound. Um, their SUV2 is probably the best plugin on the market, with a couple of exceptions. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's not cheap, but it's amazing. And every professional, when I ask them their top five mic, top five plugins, it's the one that's always in everybody's top five. Okay. There are a couple that come close, but the only one that's like in Daryl Thorpe's, in Eric Valentine's, in you name it, is the Soothe 2. And what's great about that is it sits there and it analyzes any kind of peaks there and you can control it. So you right. get a very smooth thing. Summer days come by. Red sunset, palm trees, dreaming of the nights in July, never be the same. Summer days gone by. Red sunset, palm trees, dreaming of the nights in July, never be the same. All those days we. That is amazing. And AI has perfected that. Now there's mm. stuff that they can just get it to be consistently sound a certain way. Yeah. But we've got to be careful because if you use that kind of technology on everything, to mix. Right. Everything is not going to just be perfect, it's going to be boring. Mm. Because sometimes a little edge to a vocal, like I don't know if you remember in pop about five or ten years ago, there was a lot of a kind of a 2k on a vocal, okay. a kind yeah. of cut, and I know a lot of mastering engineers that like to put a bit, because it's kind of a glass, glassy frequency, Okay. you know, it's sort of, I don't know, it's a scratch of glass, you right. know what I mean, it has a, hey, you gotta, hard to explain I suppose, but um, uh, that usually works for people to understand. So that helps a vocal just kind of come forward because it's it's something, you know, okay. you just boost a little bit of that area and it helps. So I might cut 2K on a snare ever so slightly, on my guitars ever so slightly, and then inch the tiniest amount on the vocal. Not be, not too aggressively because it's a horrible frequency boosted, but it can help set it forward. Summer days gone by. Red sunset, palm trees dreaming 
of the nights in July Never be the same All those days we Now but it would soothe to actually kind of lower that and then you're boosting it after what soothes is Well, that's, that's interesting. So you, 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 you've got a good point. First of all, I, just to finish up the 2K yeah. thing. No, it just helps bring something forward. Okay. And okay. lightly in a vocal, it can be really nice. Try it out, see if it works for you. Okay. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's I'll fine. actually I'll actually try it on one of my vocals. Yeah, but you very here. lightly. Yes. You just kind of like put this little tiny yeah. and then just cut it in other areas. You'll probably find it will come forward just enough. Don't ever do it. It's a horrible frequency to be too loud. Okay. okay. A disgusting got frequency it. to be too loud. The other point you're making, I love is that if you use OX Sound Soothe mm -hmm. 2 and you smooth something out, what is beautiful about it is once you smooth it out, you can then boost some air on the vocal, right. get it brighter without all of those S's and T's and everything ripping your head off, right. and help the vocal sit forward. You can start going 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and just kind of boost gently above that. Maybe use the Marg uh, EQ oh, that I has love the that. airband. Oh, I love it. Because yeah. the way the airband works is you get the 32K, which no only a bat can hear, but you boost it really aggressively and it brings this really gorgeous soft curve yes. all the way down and just makes it feel brighter without ever getting aggressive. I'm gonna actually do what you are recommending now and let people hear it. Some of these What plugin do you use most on your mixes? It could be on your mix bus, but it's huh. kind of like the, your go-to when you're getting ready to mix something. Not wishing to sound like a Waves advert, because of course <laughs> it's like World War Three when you mention Waves. The MV2. I could mix any song with anybody's plugins. Mm -hmm. And, and, and make it sound great. So I'm not, there's no favoritism here. If you gave right, me Slate, right. you gave me Mac DSP in particular, I'm a big fan of. Any of those companies, IK Multimedia, you know, they're all amazing plugin manufacturers. Okay. But what I like about the MV2, it's got yeah. this low level and high level. So on a bass guitar in particular, well, especially when you've got inexperienced bass players, not necessarily bad, not necessarily old, not necessarily young. It's not a, it's not a youth, it's not an age thing. Yeah. It's just that they're inexperienced and maybe they're going high and they're hitting very hard. Mm -hmm. It tends to fret out a little bit and the harder you play a bass guitar, the less low end you get out of it. If you can just okay. get that perfect touch, yeah. like Jocko's right hand was very soft very light and very, very fast. Yeah. And he could get low end out of wherever he was on the neck. It could be like, bottle, bottle, da -da, do -do 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 -do. you know, even when he was here, yeah. he still had tons and tons of low end because he had just that perfect touch. But not everybody's got that. Not everybody's Jaco Pistorius. So, you know, they'll be hammering it like crazy yeah. and they haven't quite got the low end. Mm. And that's fine. The MV2 takes the low level information and you can boost it up, it takes the high level stuff and brings it together. So you can deliberately Slide. reduce the dynamic range of a bass. But that might sound like people are like, oh, why would I want to really it's not reducing the dynamic range so much as in the volume total of the bass. It means that these high notes mm -hmm. will now come up in volume, and if you've got something like an R bass or whatever equivalent you want to use to get low end boost, right. you can kind of have it there, be there all the time. To me, that's what I want. Oh. If I'm playing an open E, dong down there or way up here, I still want to hear oh, like thickness to it. Thank you so much for these Thank tricks, you. Warren. And hey, everybody check out Warren's channel. He's got tons more of these mixing tips and tricks and so much more you can learn from him. I'll put a link to his channel below. and I'll so the links to anything else we talked about in this video. My book. Yes. Thanks to my book. Oh man. I wrote a book. I need your book. Yes. Where's the book? Hey, everybody, make the music you love. Thank you again, Warren, and thank, thank you. you for having us in one of the last times at Spitfire Studios in in this current location. Marvelous. Thank you ever so much. Been a pleasure. See you guys. Thank you. So long for well. Adios. Goodbye.